So joining me now to talk all things fan culture is Duquesne University Psychology Chair and Associate Professor Dr. Elizabeth Fine. Thank you so much for joining me and I'm interested to dig into this because um, there's so many Taylor fans out there. Uh, but, but why do people even become fans in the first place? Well, I think that people are moved by what they're moved by for so many different reasons. Maybe it reminds them of something that they've experienced or felt or dreamed. Maybe it looks like something that they want to be or kind of aspire to. But what I find so exciting about a lot of fan culture is the way that it brings people together mm -hmm. into these kinds of shared experiences around something that's really deeply meaningful. So what do you think it is about Taylor exactly? Well, I mean, there are probably a lot of people out there, I'll be honest, who know her musical catalog in a lot more depth than I do. But something that I really respect about her is that she's an incredible storyteller. Yeah. The songs that she writes are almost like these little myths, mm -hmm. you know, that you can put yourself inside and really relate to because they're so specific, they're so detailed. You know, where was I in the room and yeah. the phone rang and <laughs> what was he wearing in the bar? And you know, where was I sitting in the car on the drive home? You know, it's so specific, but it's almost like because of that level of detail, there's something that's not universal, but at least like widely shareable. People can step into those stories and, and feel like they're finding something of themselves. Yeah, and, and even bringing people together, all mm -hmm. the friendship bracelets, yeah. that took off. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not sure how the, the idea came about, but I mean, this brought so many people together and they become loyal fans yeah. at this point. But there is, um, there's different types. What kinds of mega fans have you seen before? What are like the different types? Well, my research looks at people who are organized around a shared interest in some kind of a creative practice or product. Mm -hmm. So like science fiction conventions, people who are interested in science fiction, people who are interested in role playing games, people who are interested in cartoon animals like you might see in a Disney film, right? And there's this sense of, of something collective that happens. You know, there's a, the socio sociologist Emile Durkheim has this concept of collective effervescence, mm. which is basically a feeling of bonding, solidarity, community togetherness and belonging that comes out of participating in a shared ritual. Yeah. So, you know, that sounds very abstract, but I think something like, you know, you go to a furry rave at a furry convention, mm -hmm. or you go to one of those, you know, Taylor Swift parties where everybody's singing along to the songs yeah. together. You feel like you're part of something bigger than yourself, yeah. but also that connects with something that's, that's very deep within you. I think that's a powerful experience for people. Yeah, I think it can go both ways too, you know, so when does fan enthusiasm become dark? Mm -hmm. You know, I think, you know, you always hear these stories about people who take it too far, you mm -hmm. know, who might become stalkers or become aggressive towards somebody like a celebrity or just people for whom it kind of constricts their life, you know, where it becomes kind of do the dominant thing. So in my experience, that's mostly when somebody's struggling already. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're already feeling kind of isolated, kind of lonely. Maybe they've already got a tendency to kind of see or think of people as objects. And mm -hmm. fan culture, celebrity culture really lends itself to that, right? Yeah. So I think sometimes people seize on that and, and it can take them to, to a place that's not as good for them. So how can somebody recognize whenever they're, act they're starting to maybe take it a little bit too far? You know, I mean, I would say same thing is as true for a lot of things. If you feel like your fan interest is constricting your life mm -hmm. rather than expanding it, if it's shrinking your social circle and sense of relatedness rather than expanding it, if it is making you less of the person that you want to be rather than helping you become more of who you want to be and live according to your values, if, if it's not helping you grow, yeah. you know, then maybe it's not working for you. Yeah, how, how, when can some, how can someone even get help? Like, how do they seek help? When do they know? Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking back to the conversation earlier with the parent panel yeah. about looking for help. I think this is the great thing about having a community, about having other people that you can feel connected with, is if you're worried, talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, talk to your friends, talk to your families, talk to a, a respected elder. You know, if you're in a religious community, talk to somebody in that community. And, and all of this stuff, you know, this question about, well, I'm really into this thing, there's something that I'm doing, but is it working for me? Is it right for my life? Is this, is this going in a good way? I think therapists are 
really good for those conversations as well. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's so fascinating. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you.